Hello, everybody. Welcome to Arsenal X and GR Radio's Xbox Podcast. I'm your host, Eddie V. And as always, we throw up the X. <laughs> what the world was that? I was praising, I was praising the sun. <laughs> I thought he was about to do the YMCA. <laughs> right. He was just like, oh. It's like, I used to work. I used to work there. I was like, when did he become Catholic or something? <laughs> and what religion did you turn into? Uh, joining me, as always, it's the Wise West Constantine, Mr. Jesse Douglas. Hey. Yeah, I joined the Church of Black Ops. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we were talking about that. Oh, no, wait. Why am I pointing this way? And oh, Because he's changing it on you. Yeah, he changed no, I didn't the... change anything. <laughs> Shh, no, don't it's, been, it's 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 been the same for fifty nine episodes. It, okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> also join me as you guys can see it's Bossman himself, Mr. Corey Derrick. Hi. I'm on the left side. I'm over here. I'm this way. Okay. Normally when I point normally when I'm facing you and I'm pointing you on uh, the screen because you're on my right today. You would normally be like, okay, that's Jesse. And then when I do point oh, to Jesse. because you, you and I entered the call before Jesse, so we switched sides. Got it. Gotcha. Nailed it. Gotcha. <laughs> Jesse's fault. He wasn't on time. He had to pee. <laughs> no, I was sitting here waiting. <laughs> <laughs> well, how are you guys are doing? Uh Hopefully you guys are enjoying your week. You're enjoying your weekend. Uh, before we get into the show, we I just want to plug a little bit. Uh, next episode is going to be a movie commentary, getting ready for um, Halloween. Pass. And, and, <laughs> oh, uh, and Jesse, uh, can you tell us uh, the title of this movie and what to expect a little bit? Uh, it's called uh, What We Do in the Dark. I believe if yeah, I remember that's, that sounds like a that's that sounds like a scary movie. No, it's not. It's I don't so what it is. So what it so what it is is it's a, a mockumentary. Uh, if you've ever seen the movie, um, uh, blanking right now. Uh, oh, crap. Scary. It's movie? a like it's, it, no, it's a British. Spin- it's a the Spinal Tap movie. Yeah, this is Spinal Tap. So like so like you know, and this is Spinal Tap. It's it's the you know these British guys pretending to be this band, and then it's just you know just humorous, like you know like they want to have this big like devil thing drop down in the middle of while they're performing their heavy metal, and and it's just this little tiny thing that falls down, and you know just goofy things like that. So that so basically this is like that, but it's it's uh. Like it starts out saying that like these people are part of this secret society and and they've agreed to allow cameras to follow them around to to see you know how how things go and how they live and stuff like that and so basically what it is is you're is you're getting to see like they're pretending like the the nightlife of of zom or of uh vampires of, of vampires is real. And so you're getting to follow vampires around like a group of guys that live together in this house, these vampires, and see how they live and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. so it just be it just becomes humorous and like, you know, all kinds of goofy British type humor things happen and stuff like that. So I haven't finished the whole thing because I just had heard some people talking about it on a podcast and it just sounded right up my alley. And I know that Corey isn't a big fan of horror movies. So I'm like, well, this this is like the best of both worlds. We get like something that's Halloween themed, but it's also a comedy, comedy. something that, that we Satir- might all enjoy. So Satirical. So yeah, it's good. It's literally going to be entertaining. So I cannot wait uh, to see this. Um, I've never heard of the movie. Jesse brought it to my attention. So um, I'm going to try to find out where people can get it. So that if they want to, uh, if they want to, you know, check it out when the episode goes live, they can. They know where they can buy it or rent it and stuff like that. Yeah, it's for sure on Amazon Prime. 
So yeah. if you have if you have Amazon Prime for mm. sure, you can watch it there for free. So okay, and I'm I'm probably gonna check it on Xbox to see if it's on like their site. I mean on Xbox Live or PSN. I'll, I'll look for it too. Also, so I, people can rent and stuff and you can watch it there. So uh, that is going to be next episode, and then we'll get back to a regular episode because um, we still got two more turtle movies to do for our movie commentary, and then we're going to figure out where to go from there. <laughs> both both on say. Hulu, by the way. Both oh yeah, that's that okay. is right. <laughs> I'm going to watch the second one tonight. Dude, I just want to say those movies are great. And by yes. great, I mean they are totally watchable and fun. They're they're not yeah. great movies, but they're 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 fun. And by the way, watch Power Rangers movie. That movie is way better than it has any right to be. <laughs> we might actually do that one. Oh my gosh, that'd be cool cuz like I actually, yeah. I really I really like that movie. Like yeah. Plus there's, a, there's a really there's a really big fan servicey part where like all the Zords are running side by side and they just mm. play the, the theme song for no reason. <laughs> it's awesome. It's just like this tw- this 15 second segment of the movie that doesn't need to even doesn't serve any purpose in the movie and it just does it because that's what they did in the show. <laughs> you know what? We might do that for probably a New Year's Day, uh, a New Year's episode. Let's watch that Power Rangers movie just to start the year off. Yeah. Yeah, oh, we gotta start planning for 2019. It's gonna be a big year for us. Oh shoot! I, <laughs> I, I gotta figure out how, how the heck I'm gonna do E3. Man. Uh, well, man, so. E3 just, just let's take a let's just take a pause right there. <laughs> <laughs> E3, man. We not even. Well, and we'll probably have an episode probably around December where we probably reflect on Microsoft's. Um, 2018, like from games, announcements, some of their ups and downs. We'll probably do a reflection episode what, in man, the games. Xbox is building a foundation, looking really good, especially if mm-hmm. this uh, other studio rumor is, is going to happen, which I'm sure uh, we'll talk about in the news. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Just No. Just really happy to be here, guys. Yes. <laughs> Before he has back to the couch and pass out. Dude, I'm not gonna make it to the bed after this show. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna lay on the floor right next to the desk in a fetal position. She's gonna be right on you. No. Get away from me, smelly cat. Use it as a pillow. <laughs> yeah, right, dude. I try to I try to pet her on the head and she like attacks me like I'm trying to steal her tail or something. <laughs> That is ferocious. And by ferocious, I mean she just goes rah. Our cat is like that kind of too with like with a lot of people. She she does the whole like letting you like pretend what like she'll you let doing, you. Corey? You're doing the most. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jesse. <laughs> You're just like this and you know, see this quality. <laughs> like would you turn it to the keyboard cat? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh. she'll like she'll do that whole thing where she wants you, like, pretends like she wants you to pet her, and then she'll try to bite you when you do. <laughs> yeah, it's a good time. Uh, I am I am glad she doesn't really bother the baby though. That was like yeah. the one thing I was like super worried about. Yeah, but... it's not it's not uncommon for people to have to get rid of pets when they get a when they have a baby in the house because it just doesn't work out. Maybe yeah. I'll just accidentally leave the door open one day. <laughs> We're gonna get into what's been in our arsenal. <laughs> Corey, what's been in your arsenal, man? Well, the the last like four and a half hours it's been <laughs> Shadow of the Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Uh that game, man, I'm last week I was uh, last week I was a little bit down on it, I think. Uh but I had only played like an hour, an hour and a half of it, and like mm-hmm. I don't know. There's just something. Maybe I just wasn't in the right mindset. But man, today I played a ton. This week I played a ton. I'm loving that game, man. I think it. I think it's just as good as Rise. I. 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 I mean, there's some things that I think Rise does better, but there's also things I think this game does better. Um. You know the stealth stuff and and hiding up against the wall and waiting for people. I've been really tr- playing this game stealthily, like because you get. At, 
extra XP for doing stealth kills and stuff. And like, mm-hmm. I'm really, I'm really digging it. You know, I like how, I think my favorite thing is it like really pulls a lot from that, uh, original reboot game and mixes it well with the open spaces of rise. So it's like, it's more linear, but it doesn't really feel linear. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. that's, that's what I think. I think I, I like that a lot about this game. Uh, the tombs are challenging, but not, they, they're not so challenging that you get frustrated, but they're challenging enough to make you feel smart when you solve something, you know, which is just the right amount of puzzle solving. I like <laughs> And And the, th- and the thing about doing the tombs and tomb writer, like it, it literally is connected to your, uh, like status, like level builds, your abilities to uh-huh. open and stuff in order to open like pretty much get everything on that you have to do every tune mm-hmm. uh, so you can like get like further on and unlock it yeah. uh, because um i think the counter ability is like behind the tune yeah the counter ability is i i unlocked that where you like the dodge counter yeah yeah that move is awesome I, I i'm like man that's the move i need to get and i i went through a tomb and i got it and i was like yes this is cool but wasn't it always part of one or two, or did you have to get I, it? I don't. I don't. It wasn't part of one at all. I don't think, unless I just just ran through one and just kind of forget what I played. But uh, mm-hmm. I know in Rise you could unlock it. Uh, okay. But you know, I'm really enjoying it. I it might be my favorite game in the series so far. Like, I mean, who knows if they're going to make another one? I really hope they do because these games are just fun. Uh, it's weird using guns in this game. <laughs> I mean, I know there's been guns in the other games, but like, it's just it's really weird getting the guns. But the sh- <laughs> again against those uh, nasty enemies that I was telling you about. I don't want to spoil anything for this game, but those nasty enemies Ed, that you and I were talking about. <laughs> yeah, right before we started recording, shotgun works real well. <laughs> so, <laughs> um. I was going to, there was something I was going to ask because you had talked about this kind of, uh, you know, on Pow Block. um, And I was going to ask there, but so are the the outfits in this game versus the other games, are they like they actually something worth getting? Yeah. Like, do they benefit you a lot more? You unlock the one, there's specific ones you unlock throughout the story. Yeah. But then you can go and, and collect resources and kind of buy ones from merchants and stuff that, Okay. unlock other abilities uh okay. but they the the outfits you get have uh abilities attached to them so the okay. jack the jaguar one that you get early on uh helps you stay stealthy uh you know okay. it it allow it it's like uh it allows you to hide from enemies better mm-hmm. okay uh, so they yeah. don't they don't detect you when you're moving around as much unless you're like right up on them uh okay yeah. And when you do some of the side quests, you that's one of the go. That's one of the things that you receive when you complete them. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, because like I didn't worry about the the outfits much in the first two because I just I just didn't really care, you know. Like I, I didn't really pay much attention to them, but yeah, if I it's usually, a, yeah. if they're actually useful in this one like that, you know. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe Rise, they were in the last one. In Rise I just kind of like because if you got the season pass, you kind of unlocked all the outfits from the get-go. Oh, okay. And so like I just I just kind of found one that I liked and just kind of stuck with it. Yeah. Yeah, cuz okay. I don't think in Rise they do anything compared to uh what they do in uh Shadow, like there's yeah. some ability or you know some benefit that's attached to it. Mhm. Yeah. Yeah, it is yeah weird. and I think especially that first one, I think they were just basically cosmetic. Yeah, it's really weird because like they have the original Tomb Raider skin in there, and then yeah, the Angel <laughs> of Darkness Tomb Raider skin in there, and then they oh, have nice. the Tomb Raider reboot skin in there, and it's like, man, even that Tomb Raider reboot skin looks dated. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. it just, I it just, man, that looks dated already, and that game's only what six years old at this point. So yeah. Uh, yeah, it's 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 weird, especially when you're in a cutscene and you're using the the original Tomb Raider. Oh, skin. I've seen that. <laughs> it's just it's like, just... man, this just looks real funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, I've been I've been in love with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I if 
if you like just a dumb, fun action game and just want to solve some puzzles and have really cool action, like, please play Tomb Raider. <laughs> Ed and I have been shouting from the rooftops that Rise is, like, the best game on Xbox One right now. Like, Shadow is right up there with it, if not better. Like, for me, at least. Just yeah, please buy Tomb Raider. I want another one. <laughs> <laughs> this game these games keep getting, i i plan on getting it eventually here the, but these games keep getting put out in the worst times of the year and nobody ever buys them please buy them right <laughs> <laughs> and like i know idos montreal and 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 crystal dynamics have the have marvel disney money now to make the avengers game and the rumored guardians game but like please buy two right here i do not want these games to go away yeah, Rice had to go against Fallout Four, and then Shadow had to go against uh, Spider Man, even though Spider Man came out. Yeah, so uh, I've been I've been really loving this game. I I'm gonna look at the achievements, and I might be I might go for the full achievement list. We'll see. We'll we'll see if there's difficulty ones attached. I'm like, nah, I'm done. I'm good. But uh, I've been I played a little bit of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Mm-hmm. I finally got far enough to where I'm like, this game feels really good to play. I'm going to put it down and finish Shadow of the Tomb Raider first because I want to finish Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Spider-Man before I move on to this because I know one, it's going to be like, remember last year when we played Odyssey, or when we played Origins for like two months straight, Ed? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I know that this game is going to take up a lot of time and I want to make sure I get all my Game of the Year stuff in before I start this game because... It's it's not coming. It's not coming out of my disc tray for a while. So, uh, yeah, I've been I played a little bit of that. I like it. it I, it's finally to a point where where Assassin's Creed feels good to move. You know, which you know should be a if you're climbing and doing stealth kills in a series like that, movement should be a priority. But it seems to not have been in the past. But it feels really good to move around. Uh, and and jump around and stuff. So uh, that's been that's been going well. Destiny two, I've been playing. Uh, but like I said, I'm Pow Block. I'm working on writing something right now. Uh, a goodbye letter to Destiny. Not in terms of like stopping to play, but playing hardcore like I used to. Just because it's this this game, Forsaken changed it to a point where like it really doesn't fit my lifestyle anymore. And you know, I I feel bad because like my my clanmates are kind of I don't know, mad's the wrong word, but like they keep asking me why I'm not playing or where where I'm at and stuff, and I'm just like, I can't, man, I can't put the time into Destiny anymore. <laughs> so, um, I'm I'm working on something for that. Like I I I love Destiny. Destiny makes me extremely happy and extremely frustrated all at the same time. But it's just it's at a point where I just can't play it anymore, <laughs> to, like how I used to. So uh, I, I'm still gonna jump on once in a while and play casually. Like mm-hmm. if you guys end up getting Forsaken and and playing through it, I, I'll play through it with you guys and try some stuff and play it casually with you guys. But like, you know, I can't be raid ready week one or week two. You know, I I just have to play these other games and 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 use the limited amount of time I have to game wisely <laughs> and with all these great games and wanting to play blackout with Jesse, like destiny's just gotta, just gotta be that casual game now, you know? So, uh, but other than that, I've been playing some South park on switch. Uh, stick of truth is, is still really good. Uh, that, that's the bad North. I've been playing on switch. I don't know if that's on Xbox or not, but if you don't have a Switch... I think it, it may be. I'll uh, have to check. For those that don't know, if you don't listen to Power Block, which you should, we're giving away Dark Souls Remaster on Switch, so you should go check that out. You should check yes. out the, the details for that. <laughs> yeah. Uh Bad North is basically a a island. like you You are put on an island with your troops and you, you the whole goal is to protect the island and then you move on to the next island and protect that island and then as you progress through the game you f- get new types of troops new 
uh, abilities for the troops, that kind of stuff. Uh, and you just kind of play like that. You know, it's a strategy game. So uh, it's it's really cool. There's a quick look up on NGRRadio.com uh, on Switch. You can check that out. If I, I think it's on Xbox as well. Uh, it's definitely on Steam. It's on PC. So uh, check it out. It's it's real cool. And then, of, of course, my nightly dose of of tetris yes i can't i can't not play tetris did i tell you what happened last week did i tell you what happened twice in the last like no. in the last like four weeks oh uh, no i beat tetris i didn't know that was possible really <laughs> there's 15 levels and i got through all f- oh, 15 yeah. levels and then it just says congratulations and then it gives you a high score and i'm like i didn't know this was possible <laughs> yeah, so uh, Corey Bad North is on Xbox One. All right, cool. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I'm like, man, I'm getting really good at Tetris. And my good, I'm like, <laughs> I got extremely lucky at Tetris. <laughs> I only could get to level twelve oh, in Tetris. Man. Dude, those pieces start falling like crazy. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. No show. You got a hundred and fifty. Wow. Yeah, it was awesome. Nice awesome i don't know my high score is like i don't know i'd have to look it up but i saved the replay so i might post it online somewhere uh, sweet yeah nice. but uh, it's oh, man so good uh also ed after maybe after this recording we need to talk about the nx challenge for 2019 maybe we'll talk about after what we've been playing but uh, that's yes. the that's oh oh Madden is the other game I've been playing like <laughs> almost religiously. I'm eight and eight online. <laughs> if you want to challenge me, I play as the Browns. Corey in HD eighty six on Xbox Live. I was yelling at Corey because uh, I was just like, "Why can't this?" Yeah. I'll get to my Destiny two story. Did <laughs> when it's my turn. <laughs> uh, I just. I was just uh, this is the funny thing because you just didn't stop the message. You just didn't just just hit the chat thing. Just invite me to a party chat to just talk me through. Just I know, but see, me. my headset was on my desk and I was over <laughs> on the couch and I was playing a game online and it was a whole thing. <laughs> so I would have had to get up and waste like ten seconds of of play clock time. And it's just you know, just I'm just messing with you. <laughs> uh, but yeah man madden is i forgot how frustrating madden is Ooh, boy. Mess. oh boy oh yeah. boy watch power block and you will understand why uh, madden is a mess i just i'm just like dude it i'm making plays that i shouldn't be pl- making and then there's obvious plays that i should be making that that i don't make and also the other team like it's just like man it's like a, some of the some of the interceptions i made today was like i was playing blitz man my character my player was flying across the field like 10 to 15 yards to make an interception and i'm just like man whew, that was not should not have happened <laughs> uh so you had the flash on your team yeah pretty much <laughs> uh, and i'm like Den- Denzel Ward's a great player, but man, he's he should not be jumping that far. That's all I'm Dang. saying. Brown, they Browns play the, the Buccaneers flash. tomorrow, by the way. <laughs> man. Browns play the Buccaneers tomorrow, by the way. I'm very excited to watch this game. Even though I'm only gonna be able to watch a little bit of it because it's our two year wedding anniversary, so uh, we're gonna be celebrating. I'm gonna go out to eat and have some alone time. So Maybe. Grandma, grandma, mama, and papa coming to get. No, her alone. sister is watching uh, Riley for a while. So, a long time. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> Sleeping. <laughs> That's pretty much it. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. yeah. Oh. The only alone time I get is at work when I'm working there by myself. <laughs> Nap time is what it is. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but that—that's all I've been playing. All right. Uh, so Jesse, what's been in your arsenal, man? And then I'll get to mine. Yeah, I so I 
kind of went into some of the things a little bit more in depth on on Pow Block. So if you want to get a little bit more in depth, uh, listen to what I've been playing. <laughs> we'll we'll watch that hour and forty minute episode. Yeah, <laughs> it's like about a, a half episode. It's a oh. half an hour of what we played, wasn't it? <laughs> no, it was like it was like forty five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there you go. Yeah, like what we played. I. But yeah, so I've I uh, I could probably cut and paste some of that stuff into this episode, and it would be just fine. <laughs> it would fit right <laughs> in place because like the first like forty five minutes, the I think the only Nintendo games we talked about were like bad. I talked about Mario Party. Yeah, like Mario Party <laughs> and Bad North. I think were the only Switch games we talked about, and then Ed <laughs> talked about Luigi's Mansion for a little bit. And then I get it got on me about Breath of the Wild. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, yeah, because Ed's been telling me he's gonna beat this game. For like two since, years now. since May of last year. <laughs> year. Uh, Ed, no, not only not only was Ed like part of the way through on the Wii U version, he then yeah. got it for Switch when he got a Switch and started playing it there, and he's making progress. He says today. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, progress. I, I love the fact that when you did that, your health. Your health. <laughs> See, I didn't even notice that, that I did it. <laughs> You're just like making prog. I'm just like, okay. <laughs> he's preaching the truth there, everybody. So I'm not. And <laughs> he says he's going to beat it soon. I said, okay, we'll check back next summer when you're still playing. And I did, and I did say, you're probably right. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be playing it on the train on the way here. Exactly. <laughs> Scrambling yeah. to beat it before yeah. you get here just to tell me that you beat it. <laughs> <laughs> be like Corey. I just got the Zelda uh, the uh, <laughs> the sword. How many shrines have you found so far? I think six. Oh my gosh! God. Are you serious? Get out of here! <laughs> Making Only progress. Six? That is not. Pro- <laughs> That's not progress. <laughs> That's leaving the Great Plateau and yeah. <laughs> wandering around for ten minutes. Oh. That's why I said six. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Yeah, it will be next year around this time that we're no, gonna. Because, because most of the time, most of the when I was doing the Wii U version, uh, said I was doing a lot of tries, like just you know going around the world, see what I, I could get to get into. But I was trying to see where all the towers were at, so I could be like, okay, oh, and then get to that land and be like, okay, I need to figure out how to get to this tower and and climb up and then unlock the world. I was trying to unlock the map. While still doing yeah. the shrine and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I did too. I I unlocked the entire map, and then as I went through, I would use the those markers, the different colored beam <laughs> markers that you get to mark where I see, yeah, uh, shrines to go back to later. But yeah. Yeah, and then I I was even using the icons too. I would mark them with an icon or whatever, so the so then that way I could just know where all of them were. But. but it, Right back to you, Jesse. About what yeah. You so I was I was playing. I played Mario Party. Um, I played. I played actually a little bit of uh, Call of Duty World War Two, uh, before uh, Black Ops Four came out, which is what I've been mostly playing, and uh, I'm really enjoying that game. They they did an amazing job with it, and like even though it's it's uh only multiplayer based for the most part mm-hmm. they did they did a really good job of still giving you enough kind of story stuff that you can do with the uh the uh, specialist yeah. HQ thing that they have and then um i also finished uh Resident Evil 7 uh, I, I was scrambling to try to finish that before Black Ops 4 came out because I knew once that came out, that's all I was going to want to play any any free time that I've had. And uh, that's basically what's, what's happened. But yeah, with Resident Evil 7, I did go and do it a little bit more on, on Pow Block, like I said, but um, Resident Evil 7 was, was a really good game, and, and I just kept on, even after I finished it, uh, I had all I've the extra add, stuff. I- I forgot to ask you, what did you choose when it came when it came to the girlfriend and the uh, the dad's oh, I, daughter? I picked the girlfriend. Okay. Yeah. Which which, I I would imagine that would change it 
somewhat, but not really, does it? It does it, it changes change the it, end of the game. It uh, in a way it does because it changes on um uh, it changes how you go about the ship part and stuff. Oh, does it? Okay. Yeah, but it, I th- I think it might. Ch- I think it changes the ending a little bit. Um. Okay. It, it's well, been, I, I would imagine because, like, you know, obviously, like, at the end, like there, you know, like the the one the one that you didn't save, I believe, turns into that frost. Or no, no, never mind. That's that's one. I, I'm think I'm mixing it with the. Uh, the uh what i was about to say i, I pl- also played some of the the extra mission stuff that you mm. could get you know the extra just because i enjoyed how well the game worked so much that i wanted to play more of you know play more of it so i'm definitely hoping that when you know when if resident evil 8 ever comes out that they they kind of stick with that with that that first kind person. of first person yeah cuz i, I I liked it way better. I think than, what they, the what, last. I think what they're doing with Resident Evil Two is probably going to be the same. Uh, it's going to be like the foundation for Resident Evil Eight. Um, in a sense, maybe, maybe o- only only reason Cause because because I, I mean the thing is is if they do remakes, then they can get your traditional Resident Evil games and those, and then continue doing that with the. With the the ongoing, you know, ad- additions to the to the uh, the story. Well, Resident Evil Two is. I think it's going to be first and third person. I think. Oh, I don't think it's it? all. I don't think it's going to be all first. I'm not sure oh, yet. Okay. Um, yeah. there really hasn't been that many preview stuff, and news news should be dropping about Resident Evil Two like really soon because yeah. that game comes out in three more months. I'm hoping maybe we'll get some more at at XO. Maybe we'll get some more about that at XO, then Probably. because that will be next month. So yeah. That be so yeah, that's for playing. the most part. That's what I've been playing. Corey Corey's got to play Resident Evil Seven. <laughs> <laughs> nope, that game is so the fun. Sc- the most that Corey would play is Luigi's Mansion. He's gonna stay right there. Well, I'll you, play you Luigi's Dead, Mansion all day. You played Dead Space, didn't you? No. Oh, you didn't play Dead Space. No, <laughs> you don't, like uh, just for a second, I just want to say that the creatures. I saw the beginning Dead of Dead Space, Space too, and I was like, best. I'm good. Like the whole mechanics in Dead Space are some of the best. Like. It's so satisfying shooting limbs <laughs> off of off of those aliens. Yeah, I don't even remember the last scary <laughs> I, game I played. I am. I haven't. Uh, I have Desmond. I think I have two also. Um, but I, I do have. Them. I have. Uh, I have three on PS3. Um, and I have Dead Space. I think I have Dead Space one and two on Xbox One. The 360 backwards because I think weren't the, one. I think one was free. For uh, for games with gold, if not, they were they were each like yeah. three or four some dollars. It was like really cheap on a on a good sale. So I yeah, bought. I, I got it somehow. The first one was free. I think it was free with with games with gold or something oh. at some point. Okay. But I yeah. got them through through EA Access. Corey, all three Corey, of them. Yeah. Corey is not going to be is not going to touch no hor- survival horror games. Uh, those, play, you're missing such this, gr- amazing I'll, game. I'll play, Resident, I'll play Resident <laughs> Evil Remake all day. I like that game. I think yeah. you would like Resident Evil 5 too. I, play, you... I played Resident Evil. That's not a survival horror though. 5 I mean, and 6 are not survival horror games. They're straight up action. They're action. straight up Gears of War ripoff games. Well, But you can't say that you at least beat a Resident Evil game because I need to beat Resident I've, Evil 5. Well, I've, I've beaten Resident Evil 1 Remake. I've beaten Resident Evil Five, and I've I've beaten Rev- Resident Evil Revelations. Oh, remake is uh, Resident Evil Remake is terrifying. And I, <laughs> and I use Resident Evil Four disc as a coaster while I play other games. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you hurt too. It's the only thing it's good for. <laughs> <sighs> then we played Ultimate Frisbee out in the yard with it. 
I can't, <laughs> I can't eat, can't eat neither. The cat, the cat uses it as a scratching <laughs> pulse. Fun, fun <laughs> fact that the frisbee they use in, 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 uh, Windjammers is actually a Resident Evil 4 disc. Four, <laughs> nice. Oh, that all, Jesse. Nice. Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> I can't with these two. This, this is the revenge I get because of what I said for Harry Potter, everybody. But, that's right. Uh, <laughs> watch last week's power block and you'll understand. That, that Resident <laughs> Evil 4 instruction manual is, is really good toilet paper. <laughs> Did he have a Resident Evil 4 instruction manual? <laughs> I have one for GameCube. Oh. Yeah. I ha- I own the game for GameCube. Okay. And it still well, says it's it's one of the only copies that says only for GameCube. GameCube. <laughs> because right. the, the second and third prints of that game did not say only for GameCube. I, I didn't even know they had I, wonder... I didn't even know they bought it from PS2. I thought it was literally for... Uh, for GameCube, and then when uh, when when GameCube and PS2 was over, when PS3 came out and they started bringing it out on those systems, it was just like, yeah, the game came on PS2. I'm like, what the heck? When I didn't ever see this at no store. It was, it was like a year later. Oh, because the exclusive probably. Yeah, it it was like when they scrapped the whole Capcom GameCube Capcom Five initial I- thing. Because they realized nobody was buying the games on GameCube, so they just ported ported them over to other systems. And then every now everybody's craving for them. Well, so. that's, Capcom's doing their job and just keeps remaking and porting them over. So, shoot, Resident Evil and Okami. Shoot, Okami has been ported what three times already. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. another game I still need to play. That ne- that needs to go on my backlog. Thanks for reminding me, by the way. Making my <laughs> backlog challenge list for 2019, and it is long. <laughs> well, uh, so I'm gonna uh, talk about what's been in my arsenal. Like I mentioned, uh, Breath of the Wild. I've been playing, um, working on that, <laughs> making progress. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, I played Forza too. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I played. I, uh, I played Resident Evil Four. I'm making progress. It sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Ed. I know. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but uh, I played King, uh, King of Fighters. Really enjoying that. Uh, uh, I, I think I'm gonna go get the Street Fighter Collection because I'm itching for some more fighter games. Um, that like it, it. Man, I'm now. I was I'm, now that I'm thinking of it. Dang, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 and 3 would be so perfect on Switch. Yeah, well, like, there's that rumor that Marvel vs. Capcom 3 Ultimate was going to come to Switch, but it never did. Shoot, Which I think is the Cap- preferred. I think that's the preferred version right now <laughs> over the Pretty new much. one. Ooh, that new one is a hot garbage of mess. Uh, just play the demo, everybody, if you care. I, was, to I just... I. I was kind of excited for that game, and I was like, "Nah." Yeah. <laughs> Shoot, I still haven't played Dragon Ball. It's Dragon like, Ball. Uh, it's like Dragon a, Ball Fighters. Fighters. It's like yeah. a yeah. Drake meme. Oh. Uh, so, um, wow. <laughs> uh, play minute. Uh, really loving that game. Um, I need to start Undertale. Uh, what are you doing I, don't know. Game? <laughs> Just... <laughs> I can't tell what he's doing because he's for oh not there he goes not... you are frozen on my screen <laughs> uh, I, I need to start Undertale. It's... It's... Um... I gotta entertain myself somehow man I'm just I'm gotta tired. keep himself awake <laughs> yeah uh Kirby's all star um I'm also playing on switch um and then i I got on my switch case because I got all my RPGs in my switch case and I looked I'm like Hmm, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, you're next. I'm going to tackle that game sometime really soon. I still need to it, do that game too. It you, dude. I need to get through Fire Emblem Warriors. That's been on my mind because I need to finish that before Three Houses drop. Um, uh, three houses I'm, getting, awesome. I'm getting prepared for that. Uh, you're going to lose me for about a month and a half when when Three Houses comes out. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Can't yeah. wait. <laughs> Woo! Uh, played uh, Chibi Robo on 2DS. I uh, was playing that at work on my lunch. Uh, getting a little bit further in that. 
Um, also, I, I've been jumping around 2DS uh, games a lot, and I'm kind of enjoying myself with them, getting back in love with my handheld gaming. Um, for PS4, uh, started up Grand Theft Auto V. Uh, yikes. Just prepare myself to why be ready. Are you, why are you playing Grand Theft Auto V? Why? You know what? I brought it so for many, Black. There's so I many good it, games out right now. And I brought it for... I brought it for Black Friday for 20 bucks, and I was just like, you know what? I'm going to give it a fair shot once again on PS4. You're killing me, um, Killing me. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, I'm, I'm trying to go in with a new list of playing this game. I still have my idea and viewpoint of the game, um, but I'm, I want to get ready for uh, Red Red. Red Dead uh, Redemption 2 to see if there's anything that they took from 5 and just stuck it in Red Dead 2 um, and just you know I, I I just have a feeling that my 131 gigabytes of space is just going to be a waste of time but I'm going to give it a fair shot and a fair adjustment when I play that game uh, no, you won't. No, you won't. <laughs> I won't I will I will make sure that no, I, nothing I, about anything Ed reviews is fair <laughs> It is fair. <laughs> no. Now, I will say my my Destiny journal though, it was it's quite interesting to read. And once again, Corey, <laughs> thank you for coming on Optional Opinion to have that discussion. That was really good. Speaking of that, when are we aren't we supposed to be recording something soon for that? Yeah, I was waiting on you. We were supposed I'm to do it last you. I was we, well last Saturday you had to work. Uh, and next Saturday I have to work too. Maybe we'll do it sometime this week. Okay. Like what whatever day you're off this week. Anyways, mm-hmm. continue. Sorry. Yes. Um so uh we're uh yeah. Um uh, but for mostly for Xbox finished pro- uh um about to say Project Gotham. <laughs> uh finished Quantum Break. Really enjoyed that game. Had it really got some it got some problems with it, but you know, I could overlook them. Um but I really did enjoy that. Um uh, I kind of wish they didn't leave it at with a cliffhanger for one part. I kind of wish that uh, a Quantum Break two would arrive sometime in the future, because um, I would love to see how well, Remedy did say it was up to Microsoft. Microsoft. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and even if they don't do the TV stuff again, I would just love to continue from what uh that ending and what was said about one character and then see it continue to go from there but um i'm in, but i really did enjoy it um uh, i'm uh install call of duty advanced warfare and um i have this on the two i'm going i'm going to be trying to work between those two um because they're part of my extension list which once again congratulations to jesse he did finish his five games so shout out to you jesse um <laughs> awesome job <laughs> Um, Great job, Jesse. We're so <laughs> yeah. <proud of> you. <laughs> I mean, probably I'm, the the most games that I've ever like completed in and, and, in one year ever, probably and, in my entire life. And for it, for for all five of them being single player games, you know that's really good for you. You know. Yeah, and only only one of them I, I did I have like a a good chunk of time put into already, because like you know like Bayonetta and stuff like that I did have mm-hmm. time put into them, but not much, because like I I enjoy Bayonetta, but at the same time it just it was just one of those games that I couldn't play for long periods of time. I would just get bored with it. Uh-huh. It's kind of like those uh, like. It's it was too it's, much like those those uh, those uh, the games where there's like just swarms of people coming and it's just a button masher and you're like it, that, like it was too close to that. It, that it was too it, close. They they're testing you to see what styles can you learn, like what moveset yeah. can you could be. Yeah. and yeah. if you're not if you're a person who. Our, who 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 doesn't come from uh, like the fighting community with combos yeah. and stuff? Yeah. The, the games like Devil May Cry and Bayonetta, those action style and listed games are going to be kind of hard to deal with. Um, yeah. Because yeah. like, shoot, let me tell you that Ninja Gaiden and Ninja Gaiden Black, them ones are hard to memorize. Like the control response and the button presses do not work well like they do 
for a bayonetta. But I can yeah. understand where you're coming from. No, no, yeah, it, like it, it's definitely not a bad game. I I enjoyed the story and everything. Like really, ultimately, that's what kept me playing it is just the humor and stuff yeah. like that. I mean that it makes up for the stuff that I didn't care about, you know. But yeah, like you said, I I just I just don't get into fighting games really anymore. So so my my interest was very little in that the you know the fighting part of the game you know the mm-hmm. that part. But I but the story and in the characters and everything was was interesting enough to to uh, keep it entertaining keep anyway. Exactly. So yeah. But. Um. So, uh, just getting to my last game, uh, uh, actually my two games, um, Forza Horizon 4, um, you guys can read the review on that on NGRradio.com and see the score that I gave it, um, it's, it really is game of the year material, I will say that, um, last but not least, uh, started up Destiny 2, uh, and couldn't figure out how to start Curse of, Curse of Osiris, and, (laughs) And uh, and I do have War Mind too, so they both appeared. Uh, once I uh, I had to ask Corey, I'm just like, why is my DLC not showing up? Because you know, because like if you play Borderlands two, um, if you buy all the DLC, if there's a cutscene and it's already in the game. You don't have mm-hmm. to really go like. Only thing you have to do is really go to the DLC because it shows you on the map where it's at, and then talk to them. Like this one, it just hides it, hides it away from you until you go and talk to somebody. And they, ne- I don't think, I don't know if Bungie mentioned that or if the game mentioned that because it doesn't say anything that uh, you need to go to the tower and talk to all of these people because it's like once you beat the game, there's like, what do you do after that? Because there's no, there's there's no there's no other content to let you know that hey you need to go talk to these people or anything it doesn't tell you that you know you yeah. beat the game and it does tell you that though you look at the planets or the destinations and it'll tell you you have quests here 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 and here and then the icons uh on the on the map show you what type of quests they are and then when you open up the destination it, there'll be a blue marker or mm-hmm. Or a it depending on uh, what like I think the Curse of Osiris markers are yellow, with the the all seeing eye as their marker, and it, that's when 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 you told me to go to the tower, everybody was green. So it didn't ha- it didn't have because anything else on it it was green. Um, a pl- public event was like navy blue, and then there would be some some stuff that was like yellow on different planets, and it just didn't say nothing. It just didn't say nothing for Curse of Osiris needs to be you know like I, I even when I press LT the left trigger to pull out everything, it didn't say anything about Curse of Osiris. Like it's like milestones and stuff like that. It didn't say anything no. about that. No, did you have to go talk to someone in the main meeting area first? You, you had to before go before it to, before it did before they appeared on the maps. You had to no. You had to go to the tower oh. and talk to um, different people, and then they'll give you the red mercury thing, and then they'll open to talk the to, You DLC. have to talk to Ikora to to uh, start the Curse of Osiris DLC. Yes. And see, okay. it doesn't it doesn't mention that. Like, if you buy the DLC, I don't think and, it even mentions that. It, it, I, it's there, but it's just like you have to do these steps to even open up to start the DLC instead of yeah. it just appearing on in a planet where you could just go, let it be a cutscene, and then the DLC starts. Yeah, which uh, there's uh, we don't have it in our news, but I'll just say really quickly so. Uh, as uh, on October sixteenth, if you buy this year's season pass, you're gonna get all the DLC, the previous DLC included with it. So that really sucks for us that bought it already. Well, <laughs> to be to Unless I had it's this cheaper. Well, I had this I had this discussion with Ray Osorio earlier today. Uh, for the last like three or four weeks, if you search for Curse of Osiris and Warman on the PlayStation Store or on on the Xbox stores, not the not the expansion pass, but just the expansion separately, they've mm-hmm. been they've been free for gold and PlayStation Plus members for like a month and a half. 
anyways. Wow. Like the, so, the new one? The yeah, new one? No, like uh, the Warmind and Curse of Osiris have been free. Oh, okay. So, which are, they're both required for Forsaken, but. Yeah. Uh, which I think is why they made it free, because I feel like. I don't know. But, of, but that cause... sucks for the people who paid for it. Right, because I So, like, Jesse is it going to be we... cheaper? Is it going to be cheaper to buy it, buy the 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 new one? I wonder if you've already bought those. No, or bro, well, no, it wouldn't because no. it's now it's free. Well, I mean, if you buy it's the annual, if you buy anything. the annual pass up front, though, it's like, I, if you buy it up front, you're probably going to play. If you're a Destiny fan, you're going to buy it and play it when it comes out. This mm. is just, it's going to be cheap or free if you're jumping in without buying them or playing them right a year later. So. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really have a problem with it because that's what they did last uh, for Destiny One. Also, yeah, you know when the big expansions come out, it kind of includes everything. So yeah, the the, the way they did my, that. My Destiny only problem. One. My only. Oh, go ahead. My only problem with Forsaken is like using that spark of light. It kind of locked me out of a lot of stuff. So yeah. I'm still kind of sour about that. But I don't know. I they're supposed to be fixing it. So. We'll see if they fix it, but yeah. So yeah, I hopped in uh, into Destiny, and so I mentioned Corey. I'm just like Corey. Can you uh, can you tell me what I'm doing wrong? I, I I got this DLC, but it's not showing up on my map and stuff. And then Corey's talking to me, and then uh, he starts to me me, it's a, a slapping me, and I'm like. <laughs> Did this fool just slap me like over and over again? <laughs> and I was just like, it was a "Good time." I was just like, "Uh, you need to get on the chat." And, hey, just and so you me. know, I was losing by four points in Madden at that point. So <laughs> <laughs> I was taking my frustration out on you. <laughs> I was like, "What the heck did I do wrong?" <laughs> so, but eventually, I am starting it. Um, slap. So, uh, and you know, jump, just jumping back into Destiny, kind of enjoying it. Uh, but yes, uh, in the uh, last but not least, uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands, I'm doing the Sam Fisher, uh, DLC. Oh, uh, geez. that's that was free. That. Ah, shoot, I heard it's really hard. Oh, shoot, I'm at level 30, I got all the guns. <laughs> Trust me, I don't think it's gonna be too hard unless the AI is that stupid. My AI, I should say. Yeah. But, uh, yep, that's what's been in our arsenal. Uh, so we're going to get into some arsenal news because it's probably been like 45 to an hour already. <laughs> Who knows? Yep. It's, it's, it's been about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, we report that Microsoft could buy Pillars of Eternity creators Obsidian. Woo! Uh, our stories come from Game Informer. Uh, Kotaku recently reported and Microsoft is close to inkling a deal to purchase the independent developer Obsidian Entertainment. According to the report, the deal is 90% finished. Obsidian is best known for its work on RPG series like Knights of the Old Republic 2 and Fallout New Vegas, and most recently the Pillars of Eternity series. Obsidian, Obsidian also the best is South Park game. Mm-hmm. Obsidian is currently in a contract to make a new RPG with Private Division, a label within Take Two Interactive. Fallout creators Tim Kaim and Leonard Boyarsky are helming this new project, but it remains to be seen how a Microsoft buyout could affect the game. Neither Microsoft or Obsidian have confirmed the rumor, but we reached out to both companies for a comment, meaning Game Performer. Um, a Microsoft spokesperson said, We do not comment on rumors or speculation, uh, speculations. And this this is from uh, Ben Reese of Game Informer. Uh, he has a take. Uh, this is still a rumor, but it does have some merit. At E3, Microsoft announced the acquisition of several companies such as Ninja Theory, Playground Games, and Compulsion. Recently, Microsoft has been on the move to renew its push into the games market. So if this is true, it could mean good things for Xbox owners in the coming years. Yeah, and then the the one guy who's kind of in charge of uh, of dealing with a lot of that kind of stuff uh, is his name, Jeff. 
I forget the the one guy that works for Microsoft, Microsoft. or for Xbox, but like he he had done that interview. I can't remember what his name is right now, but he had done an interview more recently where he said that they were they were looking to acquire more, uh, more studios, and that was just within the last month or so, or um something like that. So I mean, it's already out there. We know that they're they're looking for more studios to buy. Mm-hmm. So so I mean. They just obviously, for legal reasons and all that, they just can't say anything, probably. But you know, and and if it doesn't happen for some reason, then they don't get people's hopes up. <laughs> but Corey, any thoughts? No, I'm just you know, I think I think Obsidian is one of those developers that has kind of gotten a bad shake of things for a while, and they're like a really talented developer that just kind of just misses all the time you know there's the the infamous uh metacritic score bonus that they miss by like half a point beca- when uh fallout new vegas came out where everybody was going to get metacritic bonuses and they missed it mm. by like half of a point on metacritic and then you know knights of the Old republic 2 was arguably better than the first one it was just rushed out because lucas arts wanted it wanted a sequel out before the xbox 360 launched uh, and you know, I had a lot of really cool ideas, and they never finished what? it. The ending was they they never finished the game. Like it was an incomplete game. Was that the sequel to the Bioware one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like, okay. like where you could like you built your party up, and you could train your your party members to either be Sith or Jedi. And uh, it was, I think, I it was honestly an amazing think, game. yeah, Knights of the Republic two is awesome. Uh, it's, I didn't know. I didn't know they didn't finish the game. Yeah, it was it was like this whole thing where I think they made that game in thirteen months. Wow. Yeah, and you know that, that they had big shoes to fill. <laughs> yeah, so. and and I mean for thirteen months, it's an amazing game. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, the story like not getting to finish the that part, you know, is is a bummer. But I mean, as far as like the way it looked and everything, and it mm-hmm. played. Yeah, it, it it was pretty good for a Did, little over a year. It, yeah. So they didn't have like a cliffhanger ending, or it's just like no, credits roll. No, or... they 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 said that they only finished about two thirds of the game because there was, I think there was what three kind of major bosses, and then the last battle was against uh, like the second boss, and then mm-hmm. they kind of like as you rolled credits, they kind of had like a text ending where you just saw your ship kind of fly away and it kind of like told the rest like of the story finished. through text. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, but that last boss fight was really cool though in that game where it's like the final boss had like dancing lightsabers and you had to like dodge them while oh, you were yeah. attacking, you know. Uh I don't th- I mean I don't think those games hold up very well now, but those games were amazing at the time and didn't... god man, that game was so good. I was so excited when that game came out. <laughs> yeah, I, I I love I still love those those older those uh those games that they totally you know the Star Game Wars Pass, games the during then yeah play it mm. play it it's on Game Pass <laughs> Game Pass I'll, Game Pass is I'll great pass. by the way <laughs> we know Ed you don't like anything fun you don't like South Park you don't like Harry Potter you don't like Star Wars <laughs> man. <laughs> Stress me out. I'll feed you when I get there. You'll be fine. And then buy you a case of monster or something. Yes. yes. But yeah, like I, I feel like they, they we uh Microsoft could definitely use someone like them that like that can just they've they're just so versatile, you know. They've they've got a different you know, like all different kinds of things that they can kind of work well, on. They, so. they they know how to make PC style RPGs. Yeah, and if yeah. if Microsoft could get something like Pillars of Eternity as an exclusive, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, man! Like, f- like put it through Windows Store on PC and then through Xbox One. Oh man, that would be such a huge get for them. Oh, yeah, and, like with a Microsoft budget behind it, and not be like a buggy mess when it comes out. You know, because they've pa- they've patched Pillars of Eternity too like six times since it's come out. Wow, because well, it's, because it's got like because it's such like a such an open game, 
mm-hmm. that like you can't possibly test for every single situation. So when situations pop up, they just kind of like go through it and bug test it and everything. So, uh, but you well, can you can, f- you can play that whole game as a skeleton with a bag on your head. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. Well, and hopefully, like what I'm hoping for, like with the future of of the Xbox and stuff like that, is I hope they kind of uh, do what what they're doing with uh, with Crackdown. And just let let the 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 developers have the, all the time that they need to really make sure that they finish and make you know a really polished game. Delaying the like, game. Yeah. Well, just just giving them however long they need, you know, well, to, it's, to it's, make sure it's, that it's things the, are done right. It's the Nintendo kind of method where they like we'll show when stuff is when we feel like stuff is ready to be shown, we'll show it. Um, yeah. but we'll delay it. We won't speak about it. It's going to go dark, uh, because we want to give them the best product out. Cause, you know? yeah, cause like ar- arguably from like what I've heard, you know, like that, that plays a big part in why Spider-Man, you know, turned out as well as it did is because they were basically given like all the time they needed for the most part to, well, think, to be able to work on that, you know, well, for the- I, well, Spider Man didn't get no delays. I think if Somniac well, no, yeah. working, you know, working well, really yeah. hard, hard on that. Uh, I think after what sus- it was it Sunset um, Overdrive? That was that last game before Spider Man. Yeah, I mean yeah. they did a couple no, of VR. Th- they, well, oh yeah, I forgot about Russia, but they did yeah. a couple of VR things too. Yeah, yeah, so I I think they was probably like researching, developing, getting stuff right for Spider Man, and then started uh, working on that. We're going to move on to the next one. Uh, I really don't have no thoughts on it. You can check Power Block about that. Uh, Blizzard downplays plans to bring crossplay to Diablo 3. Um, the original story, uh, during a recent hands on demo with the Switch version of Diablo 3, Business Insider received a nice little nugget of information. Blizzard told the publication that it's working to make crossplay between PS4 and Xbox One Switch versions a reality. Though Blizzard has nothing official to announce yet, the company told Business Insider that it's in talks with Sony and Microsoft and that it's a matter of when, not if. We've reached out to Activision Blizzard for comment. We'll update the article if the company gets back to us. Um, there's a hands-on preview on for Diablo 3 for Switch, but there was an update. Um, uh, an article in Business Insider announced that the publication had learned during the demo session with the Switch version of Diablo 3 that Blizzard is planning to bring the crossplay to the titles. Uh, uh, they reached out to Blizzard for information and the company is downplaying plans, saying, all right, it has no current plans. Here's their statement in full. While we love the idea of bringing our players together across platforms, we do not have any plans to implement cross-platform gameplay for Diablo at this time. Bummer. Um... And the reason why I put it in this story, uh, because I think it would have been cool if uh, Xbox players and Switch players uh, can play can play with PC and uh, PS4 for Diablo 3. Um, it, it would, I think it would be cool um, seeing uh, how Guinness armor is running in their game. You know, mm-hmm. if you're playing with the Switch players and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I I think part of the part of it too is like you wonder if uh, they just want to try to uh, to sell sell more copies of it, like because if if people already have it for Xbox or whatever, and you know, and then like then that that would stop people from you know trying to get people more people to buy a second time on switch so now with them doing that now if you want to play it on switch you've got or you want to play with your switch friends you've got to buy it buy it again for switch you know like you know like that's so the you wonder sometimes with this is like is it is it that or or are they just waiting to see how it how it uh, runs and how it how well it does on Switch mm-hmm. bef- before they make that decision. You know, like if if they they sell really well on Switch, then maybe they will. I don't know, but I don't know. I guess it, it's you know hard to tell. But yeah, it's it is kind of a bummer <laughs> if they if they don't have crossplay. I, I say give it time. 
I, yeah. I, I think I'll wait it out uh, to see if they actually do it. Um, I am going. I am planning to get this game more on Switch um, than Xbox or PS4 because I would want to play this game even when I'm in single player mode, like on the go and like grind and build up my character. So, uh, thoughts, uh, Corey? I don't know. I I've been trying to figure out if I like Diablo or not, <laughs> you know, and it's just like. <laughs> I think crossplay would be good for it, but like at this point, I get that it's coming out on Switch, but that game is six years old at this point. Just move on, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and like I, I'm still debating whether or not it, if I really, really want it for Switch or not, <laughs> you know. Because like I, I tried playing it on on PlayStation Four, couldn't get into it, uh, and I, I've tried multiple times to get in Diablo. I just can't. I don't know what it is. I don't know why i can't i just can't get into it so that's understandable i don't know like blizzard's one of those companies that has always been hit or miss for me you know in ter- and not that those games aren't quality but it's just the type of games that they make i'm not sh- you know like overwatch is really the it's... first game that i've actually like fell in love with from them mm-hmm. you know like world of warcraft i can't i i've never played it but i know the quality that that game has become. I mean, it's got to be a quality game to be running for 17 years by now, right? Exactly. Uh, you know, I have a ton of respect for that. I like StarCraft a lot. Uh, I liked War, like Warcraft, the the RTS a lot. Uh, I couldn't get it. I just could never get into Diablo. I could never get into Heroes of the Storm. I couldn't. I couldn't. Uh, Overwatch is really the first game of theirs that I've really like fell in love with. So it's it's one of those you have to have a relationship with Blizzard on PC yeah. to understand their game. Exactly, exactly, and that's so. that's that's kind of where I'm at. Is like I don't play PC games, you know. Yeah. Except yeah. for Roller Coaster Tycoon, the greatest PC game oh, ever made. Love that game. <laughs> you know, well, I used to play, I used I to play The Sims a lot too, which is a, another great game, but. Roller Coaster Tycoon, the greatest PC game ever made. It's the only game I play on PC. It's the only game I own on PC right now. So, yeah. I just love to make the roller coasters. That's all I care. God, I can't wait for the Switch version. <laughs> it better be good. Did you know there's an original yeah. Xbox version of Roller Coaster Tycoon? Wait, what? Yeah. When's that backwards yeah. compatible? We're going to talk about that <laughs> a little bit on another time. <laughs> I'm just uh, saying, gonna... it has a 47 Metacritic score. <laughs> oh, okay. It's real we'll bad. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna pass on that then. Uh, Spoilers, Max it's Payne, still real good. Max Payne's voice actor returns to the studio that created the character. Yeah, As Ronald Express is at New York Comic Con recently, uh, Remedy Games revealed the cast for his upcoming game, Control, revealing it to be a reunion for the developer. James McCaffrey is playing Zachariah Trench. Ma- Ma- McCaffrey uh, provided the voice of Max Payne for all the Max Payne games, including Max Payne 3, which was not developed by Remedy. Um, Lame. Matthew Peretta is playing a character name, uh, is playing character names Dr. Casper Darling. Peretta played the eponious Alan Wake in a man game as well as in the sequel, Alan Wake's American Nightmare. As Courtney Hope, as we learned at E3 earlier this year, is playing Control's main protagonist, Jesse Fadden. Hope played Beth Wilder in Quantum Break. Between the three of them, they're covering about 17 years of Remedy history. For more Control, head here. And this is from Kyle Hiller from Game Informer. Um, and the reason why I actually did put this in, because I know Jesse, me and Jesse was talking about Alan Wake a couple of weeks ago. Um, and so, you know, getting these characters, these voice actors to do uh, Control. Uh, and I actually like uh, Courtney Hope as Beth. Um, her the voice acting that was it was really good, um, but I kind of want to hear what you think, Jesse, about this. Well, I'm I'm yeah. I mean, it, it, I'm excited and I'm glad that that they're kind of like I. I just really can't wait to see what this new game is gonna be, because like. You know, both of us now have finished Quantum Break and, and mm. just recently, and 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 like what I'm what I'm kind of hoping is we will get a, a part two to either Alan Wake or or uh, or Quantum Break, but 
but I, I I'm thinking like after you know after this game that they're making now, mm. like if if it becomes you know super successful, then that will kind of like you know almost force Microsoft to kind of decide. Like I I think I like I guess I don't really know where they sit with them. Like I I like. I would imagine that Microsoft probably would like to have, you know, more more games from them be exclusive mm-hmm. to Xbox. But I just wonder, you know, sometimes if maybe they're uh they're just kind of wanting them to do their own thing and kind of grow a little bit and, you know, and like you know, redefine or re refine like what they've been working on in, in their games. And then when they come back, they can have, you know, even more possibly to offer. But, uh, but I mean, as far as the, you know, this guy coming, the, the guy coming back to do the voices, like that's, that's always cool when, when you have like a group like that, that, knows each other really well and it mm-hmm. just ma- just makes for a better game because when everyone's you know well established and knows each other and you know has worked together before it just makes things easier i feel like so mm-hmm. it's only only good can come of it you know honestly <laughs> uh, what about you Corey? yeah i mean i think i think that's kind of what makes games especially games from a long running uh, a studio when they start finding their groove when people start uh having camaraderie with each other and and you see the actors kind of become friends and stuff and they work well together that's i think that's what makes a game better too is is the acting and even though they're not playing the mm-hmm. same characters they're still together making something special and i think that i think that that's cool that they're bringing people back so yeah, it's a lot like the people who made Hellblade. You know, those people seem to really be Ninja a really Theory. good group. Yeah, Ninja yeah. Theory. You know, and they that's what I was going to. Well. That's what I was going to mention about Remedy. Remedy has for some, and this probably just me. Remedy has like a Ninja Theory feel to them as a company. Yeah, um, yeah where sure. where a lot of people use them to develop these games, and that's good as they are uh, when they come out they just don't get the recognition I'm and but of, i'm kind of surprised microsoft didn't try to scoop them up too you know? yeah yeah i mean and maybe they did maybe they just want to stay independent so they have their freedom you know you never know yeah that's what i wonder you know and, and honestly like as much as i would love for control to be an xbox exclusive at the same time just as a fan of games i'm glad that people get to play it on playstation 2 you know like like i'd rather they get success from all the systems than only one you know like well it I, it, it, just... it, it depends it depends on who the publisher is going to be willing to work with Remedy. Um, yeah. Because, you know, Microsoft <laughs> worked with Remedy um, uh, for Quantum Break. Rockstar was supposed to be working with Remedy for Max Payne 3, but kicked them off. You know? Yeah. So, and that, that there's a video on YouTube about Rockstar Remedy on how Max Payne 3 came about. I think the Gaming Historian has a story about that. And it was just like Remedy was ready to do it and they were working hard on it but then something 2K or Rockstar changed their idea and then just let Remedy go and then work with them to make Max Payne 3. It's a very interesting story. So, I, you know... I kind of want to see. I, I can't wait to play Control. I think yeah. that's that was one of that was a great E3 showcase, and I was just like, I'm hyped for this game, and I can't yeah. wait to play it. Yeah, so. for sure. But we're gonna move on. Uh, October Xbox One update brings back avatars. Uh, Microsoft has revealed the contents of its October Xbox update, and the news brings answers to a years-old mystery: whatever happened to Microsoft's cartoony avatars anyway? 
The biggest addition of the October Xbox update is the return of avatars, the customizable personas that players can create to represent them on their system. Based on the video, it appears avatars have gotten a decent graphical makeover, and Microsoft says there are now more customization options to fine-tune your look. This includes a new avatar store, which will be updated monthly with new clothes and props that you can buy. Old school avatar fans, if they exist, can also opt to stick with their original creation from the Xbox 360 days. Avatars will show up in a variety of places on your dashboard, friends list, and leaderboards, but will remain completely optional. You can check them out for yourself, and there is a video on uh, Game Informer if you guys want to check it. Um, the October update is also introducing Alexa and Cortenia voice support for Xbox One. Players who own one of the AI-enabled devices will be able to turn on off their consoles, launch games, capture screenshots, and more using simple, simple voice commands. W Vision streaming and additional narrative language support round out the must new features. And you guys could learn about them on uh, Microsoft um, uh, website if you want to. So, avatars are back. Yay. <laughs> cool. I know, Jesse, you've kind of played around with this because you're in the preview program, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I I made mine like a while ago, yeah, when it when that was released for that. And and it's all right. I like I don't know. Like I I found like certain things about it mm. to be to be lacking. Like I didn't like I like one of the one of my issues is I wish I wish like you and this goes like for like the me the me stuff and all that too like like I don't like I like like when you you know play like wrestling games and stuff like that they uh-huh. they've always got these amazing like elaborate like like character creators I kind of wish that they would have just went all out and let you layer things like you know like you couldn't because that's always the problem like with with stuff is you can never like truly make it look like you unless like you've got you know not <laughs> no offense but you just got like a basic look to you that is easy to just you know make without you know so like there's just certain things that that there's there's never an there's always like an option that's close to what you'd want but it's never close enough and you know like with editing things and stuff like that so i i kind of wish that they would just do like when they do this kind of stuff they'd have more layering to it where you can like you know layer stuff like with beards like beards is usually a a, a, like those are usually a pretty basic options and and you can only get like so so much for detail like with things like that by just only having one choice you know so i don't know i like i just kind of wish that they would have went in a little bit stronger with it but otherwise i mean it's not it's not awful but it's it's could have been better (laughs) Hmm. yeah Well, we're going to move on from that. I can't wait to see it when it goes to actual life. Uh, THQ uh, Nordic uh, post DLC launch uh, for Dark Souls 3. Like, they actually confirmed it. Uh, THQ Nordic and Gunfire Games released tantalizing new details on the game's post launch content. Uh, content. The Crucible and Keepers of the Void are two separate adventures that will introduce new playable er- areas, challenges, puzzles, items, and enemies to Dark Siders 3 once you finish the game. After six years, players finally return to Gunfire Games' hack and slash action adventure as Furry, one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. She quests to restore the balance between good and evil and prove that she is the fiercest of the four horsemen by hunting down the seven deadly sins. Um, one second. There we go. Uh, in a crucible, <laughs> in a crucible, Furry is summoned by an unknown. I got you, Corey, <laughs> by an unknown entity to battle endless hordes of enemies to prove, prove her skills. Successfully complete the challenges to receive new rewards and items. Keepers of the Void sets Furry off on a quest from Volgrim into the Serpent Holes to investigate rumors of a deadly ancient threat. Triumph over a myriad of puzzles and enemies to unlock weapons from the Hollows and the ultimate prize, the Abyssal Arm. Um, 
Darksiders 3 launches on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC November 27. THQ Nordic and Gunfire Games haven't confirmed a release date for the DLC, but if you are interested in learning more about the game, you can watch uh, them play through a section of it and get a scoop on them uh, uh, during that video also on Game Informer. Um, have, uh, I noticed that they changed the way that she looked. Uh when they actually finalize the game. Like, she doesn't have her eyes no more um, that she had in the trailer. Mm-hmm. So, if you look at it, it has more of a comic look to her. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I I have, like, most of the Dark Sider games. I haven't even... Haven't even played them yet. I mean, oh, look, I just I don't, they were free. I don't, look, I expect this game to be a solid seven. Okay, I don't. I'm not expecting much from Darksiders. Darksiders is fun. They're not amazing games, but they're fun games, and I, that's all I'm expecting out of this. So, yeah, it's kind of how I feel about Although, the Just Cause games. I do like. I, I all I'm looking for is fun. <laughs> yeah, I do feel like that. This is just like a. It kind of looks like an up res 360 game, to be honest with you. Like it doesn't look great, but I'm I'm excited because I like Dark Siders. So yes, I was actually making my my uh, game uh, my backlog challenge list for next year, and Dark Siders Two is on that list. So <laughs> I need to join you on that. And yes, everybody, go watch uh, Pot and Play Season 2, where me and Corey play the first Darksiders. Yeah. We have a good discussion about that. Yeah, that game is fun, man. It is. It really is. I still think uh, Darksiders 2 is better, uh, though I never finished it. I had literally only played about five or six hours on it on Wii U, and then I was like, no, nah, I'm going to play the new Super Mario Brothers because it's better. Been, <laughs> it's I need fun. to... <laughs> I have it for Wii U and for PS4. I got the uh, that edition. I'm just like, yeah, I need to finish this. I so. have a sealed copy of Darksiders 1 for Wii U. <laughs> <laughs> Blessings. Oh, man. So. Uh, but we're going to move on. We don't got that many stories left. Uh, two million players raced through Forza Horizon 4 in the first week. Uh, Playground Game Studio director Gavin Wayben published a post on Xbox Wire celebrating the serious tra- traction Forza Horizon 4 has gained. Two million players are already racing around virtual Britain. The post announced that Forza Horizon 4 is now the highest rated Xbox exclusive of this generation and maintains the series lead as best selling racing franchise of this console generation. Other stats from the post include 4.6 million hours of gameplay watched over Mixer, Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook as of October 9th, as well as 822.7 million miles logged, 74.4 million cars owned, and over 377.7 million roads discovered. In addition to the numbers, an inside Xbox interview with Playground Games creator director Ralph Fulton in September revealed that fans will have the high Highly requested rock creator feature to look forward to on October 25th. Forza Horizon 4 is available now on Xbox One and PC. Fans with a need for speed and a need to keep their wallets intact can play the standard edition for free with Xbox Game Pass. Um, so yeah, uh, congratulations to Microsoft and uh, to Playground Games. Two million yeah. for the first week. Yeah, and I don't know if it dropped or anything, uh, but yeah, congratulations! I wonder. To I wonder if I bet that game will have more by the time Black Friday and Christmas rolls around. I think that's a lot. I think that's a game that's on a lot of people's holiday lists. Yeah, you know? I think I. I think I heard it was like the best selling uh, Forza game, like in in Europe or something like that. Like it sold sold more than any other Forza game there. Yeah, Forza sales for Microsoft, like, uh, with the Horizon games, like you said, Corey, it sells very well for Microsoft. Um, not so much the regular Forza Motorsport. Um, yeah. So, 
But we're going to get into then our Arsenal exchange. Um, and this one is kind of connected to uh, one of the announcements that Microsoft uh, gave out this week. Uh, Microsoft announced its Project S Cloud game streaming initiative. Now, I won't read through the whole thing. You guys can read that on Game Informer. But I kind of want to ask you guys um, what is this a good thing for Microsoft? And what, what, What's something bad could come from it? Like something, you know, just like they just didn't get it right. That 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 may be a fear that could come out of it. Um, Corey, what do you got? What, so, what do you think? So wait, what's what's the question again? Like, what good could come out of this Microsoft Xbox Xbox Cloud or X Cloud? And what kind of bad thing or maybe a failure or something that didn't just work or a problem for this service coming out? Well, I th- I think, first of all, I think having a cheap Xbox out there that people for people that don't really play games or people that just want to experience one or two games uh, a year or, you know, maybe want just like a streaming box for, you know, Netflix and Hulu and maybe play mm-hmm. the occasional game. Like, I think that a $100 box will get a lot of people into the Xbox ecosystem. And, like, I I think that's good to have an option for people like that. And then to have, like, the hardcore boxes that we'll buy probably, most likely, you know. But, like, if I can have, like, a hardcore box in the living room over here and then have, like, the streaming box in the bedroom or something, you know. Like that's a that's a cool option for me to have instead of like moving stuff around all the time, lugging a box here there, you know, whatever. I th- I think I think having this X Cloud available to people will get more people into the Xbox ecosystem, which will then turn around and probably sell more boxes in the long run, like the the hardcore box is what I'm just going to call it. Uh, just because people are going to start experiencing games and be like, oh, man, if I can play Forza on my phone or on my laptop or, or you know, on the streaming box, I just bought this brand new 4K TV. What's it going to look like when I can play Forza in 4K on my TV? And then they get the hardcore box in Forza, and they're like, wow, this is amazing, you know? And if you partner xCloud with the Play Anywhere, with the Game Pass... And you start putting Microsoft's games day and date on Game Pass, you know that you're you're looking at a pretty sweet deal, you know. Mm-hmm. And and so like it like the bad thing it, the only bad thing I can see coming from this is if this was the only option Microsoft was offering, you know. Uh, <clears throat> I I think they are making their box less relevant to own like a box. You know, especially with Play Anywhere on PC and, you know, moving into this xCloud thing where you can play it in an app on your phone or on a tablet or whatever. But at the same time, there's always the gamers that will buy the hardcore box that will collect the games to put on their shelf. You know, there's always going to be that crowd. And so, like, I really don't see any type of negative thing from this. You know, I, I think especially us as Americans have a internet infrastructure problem, which I think will be the bad thing. Uh, You know, and and the fact that, you know, we, we grew up in a generation where we like to own tangible physical things. Mm -hmm. And we've, some of us at least have taught ourselves to wean ourselves off of owning physical media. But now we're just going, moving into that subscription model with music, with movies, with Netflix, like, we don't own any of that stuff. We subscribe to a service, and that's kind of where Microsoft is moving games into. And so, like, you know, not everybody's going to subscribe to Game Pass, but Game Pass is a cool idea. And yes. And not, not every great game is going to be on Game Pass. You I mean, look, look. besides the Microsoft games that are on there, how many, and theoretically, how many great games are on Game Pass? You know, there's some good I ones. Did, there's some decent. I did like 100. And not they're not all great though. I'm I'm saying great games. There, yeah, there's but, over a hundred. But like, I mean, but across from all three platforms, if you put them all 
together, like first party and third party. Yeah, I know. That's you know? what I'm, that's what I'm saying though. But aside from like the Microsoft Day and Date stuff and the Microsoft oh, okay. published stuff, like how many great games are really on Game Pass? You know, like, I mean, DMC is on there. That's a great game. Uh, Rocket League is on there. Limbo is on there. Like, there's some good quality games on there. But like, you partner that with X Cloud and you say, "Hey, man." the switch is doing a really cool thing. Why don't we just do that with a phone and a controller? And then you, you buy the clip for your Xbox one controller, put your phone in the clip and start playing halo or gears of war on your phone. And that, that's a cool idea. My one thing from this though, is I really hope X cloud will allow me to stream my, like the games that I own on my box already to this device. You know, not just from a server farm halfway across the country or halfway around the world, right? I want mm. to be able to be sitting in bed with my Xbox on in the living room, be able mm-hmm. to play on my phone from bed. Yeah, that's that's like I was going to say that the one thing that I was thinking they could do is um, like the they'd have two options. Like, you could get the box that's for people who plan on streaming their games that they own, and then you can get the regular box, you know, that plays the games and stores them on them. But you can also get a very cheap option of a little tiny box that communicates with your with your but, or Xbox that you have in your house that you can hook it up to other TVs but to be able to play more, from other TVs. But this sounds more for phones and tablets and mobile stuff. Not yeah. so yeah, much it, a, not, not, not so much that's a included, box. But. I mean, but, but it sounds like not so much for I guess not so much for the Xbox itself but for Apps. Like this, like the services for mobile and tablet when you're not on your actual box. When when those, uh, but those products are connected online, because with, with this with this S Cloud, uh, I'm assuming, the, and this is just my assumption, I'm assuming that you're still buying the games, um, not so much as Game Pass, but like buying it from Windows 10, um. Or you know Microsoft's website page or something like that, and it goes into a cloud so that you can actually play. And then when you want to like download it to your actual Xbox, you can. It shows that maybe like it'll have a cloud thing. It said you know uh, we see that you bought this game that's in the cloud, but you like to download it to your actual system, and then it goes to your system. Yeah, but the the idea is though what they want uh, to eventually be able to do is you have an app on your Roku and you can play the games through mm-hmm. your Roku as well. So like you know something like that is more like what I was talking about is like you know having like if you have a Roku in your house that has the the Xbox you know app on it to be able to play the or the X Cloud app you mm-hmm. know on your Roku. You like what Corey was saying. I would, I would prefer that it be if it's connected to the same internet, uh, you know, Wi Fi as your Xbox, that you could instead of playing it from a server, play, the, you know, through the Roku, play the game off of your Xbox so you don't need to bring, you know, your Xbox and hook it up to the TV that you want well, to be on somewhere else. But because it's a streaming service, you wouldn't need, you wouldn't, you wouldn't need that. I think you just need the app. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know that's what we're saying, but we also, yeah. also hope that the xCloud app will allow us to play the games that are already on our Xbox. Yeah. Yeah. It's I'm like a, saying that you... That you'd be able to do both. I don't yeah. want it to just be streaming. That the, that the data, the it, like when you buy it or download it, that the data covers over to the cloud. Many, yeah. many, well, many, like, well, like here, well, kind just, of like Netflix. It, no, where, it, no, it's it's like okay. Say I'm say I'm playing Halo Five on my Xbox One, right? Mm-hmm. Or Halo Infinite on Scarlet, right? The physical, like the physical download or hard copy on my xbox that's sitting under my tv right right what if i want to go to bed but continue playing in bed i flip on the app on my phone 
but with and my Xbox use, still on, and I can just continue playing. It's like it's it's literally what the Switch does, but just through an app instead of taking the system out of the dock. Yeah, I, I'm thinking it's more like the or Netflix. like the screen capture type, or like the what's it called, the Play Anywhere thing that I'm that more you can do now, but only better. Yeah. But I'm thinking more of Netflix where. Where you're streaming it, if you could, if I'm playing my Netflix on my PlayStation Four, and I decide to go into my uh to the bathroom with my Switch, yeah, it recognizes my it recognizes the Switch recognizes, uh, my account and realize that okay, your your PlayStation Four is not on. You're in the bathroom with your Switch, and it picks up from where I left off with that movie or that TV show. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. We just wanted to do yeah. both. We just wanted to do both. But you things. guys are saying, but it, it sounds like you guys are saying that you got to keep your Xbox on in order no, to you play don't... it on your phone. That's what. No, that's what no, I mean. you, no. We're not that's saying it, that. That's what that's it sounded. What we're saying. That's right. I mean. That's, that's what, what I said. Sound. That's what that's, I said. Well, it, <laughs> right. That's what I. That's what it sounds like. That you're keeping your Xbox on, but when you, you leave want, the room, if you right. want to, for like but better if quality, maybe. But see, it wouldn't yeah. make no. It wouldn't make no sense that because it's a streaming service that is in the cloud, you wouldn't need it. You wouldn't need your Xbox on. Right. We're just, just saying we the, hope it does both. Like oh. You, it, can, it, you can I think, d- you can do the streaming from from the app or do mm-hmm. like a a remote play type situation. Yeah, yeah. We're just saying that we want it. If you own it, the game and it's on your hard drive on your Xbox, but, instead but of saying, having to connect with with servers way far away, <laughs> you can just play it from right off of your Xbox. But for that's certain what games. but Corey's saying that in order to do that, you got to have your system on. It's well, well yeah, it works the way that remote play does for PS4, right? You have to have your PlayStation on to do remote play. I so want do, both. Uh, I just, I just yeah, want we're to just be able saying to we both. want it to be, a, be able to do but both see, and I don't can, have to rely if, on... If my numbers. Xbox but, is off, I can still stream Forza of Her- Horizon 7 from a server somewhere. But you still need the internet. Yeah. That's the thing about it. So it wouldn't make no sense that you got two systems on the internet. No, like, I, you're... I, like, like if you're at McDonald's and you connect with your system, you you shouldn't be ha- you shouldn't have to let's say play your iTouch, your your iPad to play an Xbox game. That's going to then click on your Xbox One automatically from your home. It should be able that if you can if you're online at at McDonald's, you should be able to see the app, cut it on. Your information is there and continue from where it is without cutting on your Xbox One. Well, yeah, you'd be able to do that too, but we're just saying when you're in the house, is, is it not easier to to start a game when you're playing local, local multiplayer versus having to dial up online? If it's, if it's streaming is on a cloud, <laughs> the, your Xbox One don't need to be on if you're playing on a tablet. That doesn't make I'm, no sense. I, we're just ta- I know. he doesn't he doesn't understand what we're saying. <laughs> He's not it's getting fine. It. It's fine. Yeah, Let's we'll just, just move pay. on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I'm, I'm. I want sure. streaming and remote play in the same app. That's yeah. all I'm saying. I, we just, that's no. literally all I'm saying. So we don't have to worry about a bad connection with a server somewhere. Yeah. We want to be able to just have the local play landline or Wi-Fi connection. So it's only just having to go from our phone d- upstairs to the Xbox downstairs instead of possibly connecting to a. Uh, you know, a uh, server somewhere that's laggy, you know, like, cause that's like one of the issues that some people are having with some of the newer stuff is that mm-hmm. you get really bad frame drops and stuff like that, even with like a 50 gig a bite per second, you know, internet connection. And it's like, well, I think what, just I, in case it would be nice to be able to just play the games that you already have in, you know, physically or on your hard drive that you want to play, just be able to play them from there instead of having to play it from a from a server far away. If you choose, well, well, we're not saying well, that Mar- that's all you. Well, be the, able to all do. the server stuff is going to be done by Microsoft. Yeah, yeah, we know. Yeah, right. So it won't. So it won't go anywhere, and it like I. I feel like it doesn't need remote play because that is depending well, on. It doesn't the need end. remote play. It doesn't, I just it want doesn't it. need it. I just want but, it because it's it's early yet in this technology, mm-hmm. and I feel like if they wanna 
like I feel like they just th- that's just something that they're gonna wanna do to just to be to be sure before you know because like Corey said like there are still places that like my my in laws my brother in law that lives in Upper Michigan like they they that's can't even mistake. get it. They can't even get internet that uh, that that's powerful enough to be able to watch YouTube. Hi, they can't uh, they can't I stream. See. Yeah, they can't stream anything. Like their satellite, they got satellite internet, but for whatever reason, it, they can't even watch YouTube. Be on really it. Sad. Like, yeah. So like, so there's people that literally can't even do something like that mm-hmm. that have internet. So like, those kind of people like would basically not be able to enjoy like being able to play wherever they want at all period if they don't do what me and Corey are saying we hope they keep in there the ability to be able to play it wherever you want you know in your house yeah on a different you know different thing and just use your local inner your local wi-fi connection or, or landline connection to be able to communicate with your xbox and because they can't use the servers anyways. Well, it's know, just, it, like, I, I guess I'm, I'm just not envisioning it. I'm not seeing it uh, due to the fact that I think this cloud, X cloud or the streaming is going to be wireless. Mm-hmm. So I think trying to read the system and everything, because everything, I think everything is going to be due the app. And are you saying yeah. that the app is reading everything from from the Xbox? Well, no, it would be connected to the both. internet. It would do both, is what yeah. we're saying. It would do both. It's not one or the other. It would do both. Yeah. Like if you're if you decide that you don't want to, let's say you decide you want to play your games on a different system in your house or a different area in your house, but. Mm-hmm you don't necessarily want to use up all the bandwidth of having to connect to a server somewhere. You could just play at remote play. And, but then if you like, if you don't have those games downloaded on your Xbox, well then obviously you could play them from the cloud, from the, you know, from well, a that's, server. That's, that's what the, the, I think that's what this S cloud is kind of trying to do. Cause it's, since it's yeah. streaming that it's yeah. not, it's, it, it's not using no kind of hard drive or no other kind of system. Like it's not using none of your Xbox. It has the information in the cloud, so it recognizes it. So it won't be hard, I guess, on the Wi-Fi, like the data or anything. It won't be well, too hard for it. Well, technically, what you're gonna be playing when you're playing it through the internet is you're gonna still be playing it on an Xbox. It's just gonna be inside of these big server things. Because actually, this, well, I actually watched like, a video. I Wouldn't actually watched like smart- a video and they take the whole Xbox, like the internals that are in an Xbox, and there's a whole bunch of them layered inside of the these big massive tower things. So well, like, wouldn't this be like Smart Glass 2.0 in a sense? Well, kind of. I mean, it, like Smart Glass is, was more of a like a just a remote control for your Xbox, if anything. Well, would that idea be like the remote, the remote play, in a sense? Well, it, yeah. I mean, if if it meant actually seeing what you're playing, mm-hmm. you know, like what you're playing on on your like whatever your game you're actually playing appears on your phone, and not just that you can use your phone as a as a remote, like to you to use on your Xbox, because that's all Smart Glass was was just a basically a. Yeah. Uh, digital remote on your on your phone to control your Xbox in, in a different way. Because I wonder how I wonder how much data this is going to take up, like on the internet usage. Yeah, stuff. see that that's, that's where really like problem, my too. yeah those those are the like that's what I was going to get into. Is like my my pros is like just being able to play obviously in, in different areas and stuff like that. But my cons are. Like I worry too that there's gonna be an actual like monthly service that this is gonna be locked behind that's not gonna be cheap. Oh yeah, like, they'll they'll con- they'll connect it to a monthly service. 
you know. I know, but I but that's the thing is there, there, it's very possible with how early this technology still is that it's going to cost like you know as much as it, owning an Xbox a year or I, any. It, it would just it would just make sense if they if they if they connected it to game if they connected it if they connected the Game Pass and made it straight twenty dollars a month. That you get no, Game I, Pass and, and yeah. X Cloud, so that it cover, so the ten dollars still covers Game Pass, and your ten dollars covers an X Cloud uh, service. You know, I, it's, it's just pa- it's think, just all packed together if, to make it easier. I think if anything, it's going to be closer to like fifty, fifty, or like forty bucks a month. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think with I think it's this, gonna cost if, as much as buying an Xbox by the end of the year. If if or, the install if the install base is big enough for it to cover it, I and they offered like at twenty dollars with Game Pass and the X Cloud, I don't think I don't think the fifty dollars would be necessary to include it unless they want to do like I, I would think, say maybe uh, I, like a ninety nine ninety nine uh ultimate xbox live where'd you get well, game pass? I, I think i think they would bundle all th- i think next gen they're gonna bundle all three together in one yeah. price oh, just yeah. so people yeah. don't get confused like i don't know 150 dollars a year i think would be a fair price for all of this you get this x cloud streaming stuff you get xbox live gold and game pass for 150 bucks a year like it sounds steep but if you have Xbox Live Gold and Game Pass, you're already paying $180 a year. So, yeah, right. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah. Because that's, see, that's why I think it's gonna probably be closer to 200 a, a, a year. Uh, well, I but, mean, if they bundle it together, I think Microsoft's gonna want to give you a break on it because you're already buying has. you're already buying the box too. Plus, they could do that too because they're already well, the, they're already doing that thing through their Microsoft Store where if for like forty bucks a month you get an Xbox One X and Game Pass yeah. and Gold for forty bucks a month for two years. Like, and they, maybe and, they'll get yeah. you in that probably, way too. And they're probably like breaking up where if you don't want Game Pass, that you still just want uh, lot uh, go by itself. And if you want the X Cloud, maybe like eighty some dollars or something like that. They'll probably have like a la carte if you whatever you want yeah. to, and then like yeah. the ultimate bundle and stuff. Um, yeah. Because yeah, I think you got to kind of. I'm I'm thinking of like does this include stuff that's on Windows 10? And X and Xbox Live because there's some games that's not on Windows 10. Like the hits, like I think I think the Halo franchise is not not all of the Halo, Halo franchises. I think on Halo. Windows I think 10. Halo is the only one that's not. Yeah. Right, because Gears Four is on it. Gears it's, Gears Ultimate and Gears Four are both on there. Okay. Yeah, because only the first. On? What? It's two and three on it, or uh-uh. just Ultimate and four? Just okay. Ultimate and four. Ultimate and four. Okay. So. Uh, Will that will that part also be a part of it? I think um, I but, think they'll be on on there eventually. I bet I bet before Halo Infinite comes out, we'll mm. get a like a Ultimate Master Chief Collection where five will be in there and Reach or like an Ultimate Halo Collection. You know, it'll have yeah. it, it'll have like I don't know if it would have Halo Wars or Halo Wars Two on it, but it'll definitely have all the FPS games on there. And I yeah. think that'll be the time when the when all the games come to PC. It'll have the Halo One anniversary, Halo Two anniversary, maybe even at that point like a fifty like some sort of fifteen year Halo Three anniversary at some point, you know, or mm-hmm. whatever. And then four and five and ODST and Reach because like Reach is the only the only one that does not have a native Xbox One version. Yeah. Oh, enhancement or anything? Yeah. Or just oh, okay. So I mean, yeah. it's backwards compatible, but it's not like a like a native Xbox One file. You know, ODST is DLC for Master Chief Collection. So oh, okay. Uh, yeah. And they they probably won't roll it out. They'll probably talk more about it. I think at E3. Um, I bet Reach. With the- I bet Reach gets some sort of. I, I I bet people who have stuck with the Master Chief Collection this long will get Halo Reach for f- free or for five bucks or something, kind of like they did with ODST. I think when uh I think probably when Halo Infinite comes, 
uh, when they get a release date or something, they'll probably do something big for the Halo series. Yeah. And I agree with you, Corey. They'll probably drop it down to like five, like five dollars. They'll probably like have an E3 sale mm-hmm. and be like the, all these Halo games that you guys. I want wonder. Are really I cheap. wonder if they'll have a Halo like ten game collection or whatever because like you'll have one through five, ODST Reach. That's seven, and then. Halo Wars one and two, that's nine, mm-hmm. and then the the twin stick game, Halo Spartan Assault, was that the one that that kind of topped so, down yeah. twin stick? Like they could do like a Halo ten game collection for like sixty bucks. Yeah, like, throwing dead and alive when uh, Master Chief was the fighter. <laughs> no, please don't. Let's <laughs> let's not pass. <laughs> <laughs> game pass no <laughs> not the game pass you're thinking <laughs> oh. <sighs> well everybody that's going to be our the show that's our discussion about it we have some ideas we don't know what's going to uh, come to fruitation um, but uh, I'm excited to see what Microsoft is going to do with this um, it's probably not going to do nothing much for me personally because I do most games physical uh, and indie games still digital for Xbox, um, but I will see what it's going to be compatible with. Um, wonder if like Surface is going to get it first before it goes to um, any Android items or uh, iOS. Um, I, I just want to see how how I want to see how they roll this out. Um, if they're going to price it and um, are they going to test it? Because you might get a Jesse for the preview program party sometime next year like they might announce that e3 and they'll say pre- people who are in the preview programs will be be able to test it out uh earlier before everybody else so you might get like maybe a month or two ahead to test stuff out so yeah you know, just so, see how it works right just yeah because because that will be interesting to see how it goes um but we guys, we want to hear what you guys think. You can email the show at arsenalxpodcast at gmail.com. Also, you can let us know on our Facebook page at Arsenal X, NGR Radio's uh, Xbox Podcast Group. You can find us on Twitter and let us know at Arsenal X Podcast. And also on Instagram at Arsenal X Podcast. Uh, Corey, where can we find you? You can find me at CoreyNHD86 on Twitter and Instagram. You can find me on twitch.tv slash CoreyNHD. You can also find me on Nerds Gone Rogue and Nintendo Pile Block shows and other content. Jesse, where can we find you? <laughs> you can find me on Twitter at Phantom Maggot AX and on Xbox at Phantom Maggot AX. <laughs> you guys can find me on Twitter at that Rich Code. You can also check out Optional Opinion, uh, World War One Podcast, Nintendo Pop Block, uh, Pod and Play, and other stuff on NGR Radio and other uh, other places. Also check out our YouTube page, Arsenal X Xbox channel. If you guys want to subscribe to our channel and help subscribe. us get that subscribe. Yes, uh, check out more videos. Be able to check Hi. out our <laughs> movie commentary <laughs> and all just all our goofiness that we all do. So as always, everybody, we got to throw up the X one more time because it's late at night. Hogwarts! <laughs> he said Hogwarts. <laughs> Corey's ready to go to sleep. <laughs> this X is so I, I have we... to be up in four hours. Of course I'm ready to go to sleep. Shoot, I have to be up in about at seven. I got to... <laughs> I gotta sing. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, everybody, have a great week. Have a great weekend. Uh, be ready for our movie commentary for October 31st episode. And we will see you later. Bye, everybody. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>